going on, everybody? It is your boy, Dylan Matthews, and... Simone. Dylan Mills is somebody that I get behind. I'm not even going to cap on DeAndre Hopkins. He has the best hands in the league. Play it through it. Played hurt. Play, play through mean? it. Hobbling exactly. on back to the field. Right. I'm saying, when you, when you one of the best teams out there, you know, the other team's division, I ain't got no choice but to try and get like you. You dig? So, I'm... So, let's get right into the video. Let's go. What's up? What's going on? What's happening? What's poppin'? Everyone, welcome back to another great episode of Tough Calls with your girl, Simone, with the Spizzard. And your boy, Dylan. Yeller. So, guys, before we jump into this video, make sure you check out the links down below. Buy us that coffee. Um, yeah, buy us that coffee down below. Link, link, link. link and subscribe link, to link. me if you're here from Dylan's channel. And subscribe to Dylan if you're here from my channel. Period. So, Dylan, we got a good topic today. Um, take five. Yeah. This is probably take ten. Nah, we ain't do that many takes. This probably takes six on the video because we've been somebody... laughing and goofing off, y'all. No, it started with you, so don't even before we have to start over again. We're not gonna argue about we both been goofing off and. Like... Usually we one take, y'all. Usually we one take. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um, we've been tripping. But anyway, let's start off our first this Speaking video. Of tripping. Go ahead. Right. Speaking <laughs> of tripping. Speaking of tripping. Grayson Allen is the first player on our break tough calls. NBA breakout player list. So, Ooh. Grace Allen made a name for himself at Duke for tripping people. He was the bad boy at Duke. It really don't take much to be a bad boy at Duke. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, now he, former Grizzly, now Milwaukee Buck. The Milwaukee Bucks traded for him in the offseason. Um, and he has came in and just made an impact. He's in the starting role now for Dante DiVincenzo, mm -hmm. and his numbers are going crazy. Through the roof. So let's talk about the biggest differences in um, Grayson Allen's numbers. First of all, he's been starting. He started 14 games this season. Last season, he was obviously a rotational player coming off the bench. Um, this season, he's averaging 29.9 minutes per game, which is not that much difference from last season. He was averaging 25 minutes last season. You get four extra minutes, you know, so a little more time to get a couple extra buckets. And that's what he's doing, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Making points wise, he's averaging 16 points versus 10 points last season. Big he's jump. still averaging about one steal. Okay. Um, he's averaging four rebounds versus three last season. His free throw percentage is now 92% versus 86% last he's season. In the lab. His three point percentage has jumped. No jump shot, mm. but jump 43% from 39% last Even season. in the lab, flicking the wrist. His field goal percentage is up to 45% from 41 last season. Grayson is shooting abundantly better. And then we have another stat, a little bit more interesting. Okay. So he's doing a lot more jumpers off the dribble versus being just a catch and shoot guy like okay. he was with the Grizzlies. Okay. This season, he's averaging 1.68 points per possession on jump shots off the dribble versus right. last season when he only averaged 0.87 wow. points per jump shot off the dribble. So that's pretty much a whole point up. Mind you, the season before, he only averaged 0.7, so that's something that he's been trying to develop in his game is yep. a jump shot off the dribble, and he got that. He got that now. So now, of course, he's playing with Giannis. Playing with Giannis is definitely going to get your right. numbers up because all the attention, the double teams that mm -hmm. Giannis is gar garnishing and then being able to, you know, have Giannis off the screen and all that, you're going to be a better shooter when you're playing with Giannis, of course. But Grayson right. is definitely taking charge of his opportunity. Even though Grayson tripped Trey Young, I see you, Grayson. I see you out here, you know, improving your game, not being over and tripping no more. I see you, Grayson. Keep up the good Did work. he trip Trey Young? Yes, he did. There's a conclusive video evidence that he tripped Trey Young. I don't know. I saw the video, but I wasn't convinced. Well. And one thing about them Duke boys, like I said, them Duke boys, that three-point shot gonna be... That three-point shot gonna be wet. They gonna right. try to shoot some three. Right. One thing they teach you at Duke, boy, is how to shoot a three. That's how they get that longevity in the league. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Off For the sure. three. Let's talk about next, Miles Bridges. Miles b -b 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 Bridges. Bouncing out the gym Bridges. He got bunny bridges. You like that, didn't you? No. Continue. So, first of all, Miles Bridges, you guys know I'm a Carolina girl, best in the world. 
I never thought I'd see today what Hornets basketball was. It's buzzing. TV, right. Hornets basketball is buzzing. buzzing. right. They got LaMelo. Miles Bridges is playing well. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that Gordon Hayward was going to have an impact, but he has had an impact as well. And Michael Jordan actually sitting courtside for them games now. Right. Michael Jordan used to be real low-key with the um, Hornets. Uh -huh. He done had a couple of videos. Now, Kelly Oubre is on the team now. He's mm -hmm. been having a pretty good impact. Jordan actually cares about the, uh, the old Hornets now, it look like. So let's talk about Miles Bridges' numbers. So last season, Miles Bridges turned out a four-year, $60 million deal, and he has done right by himself. He is now, his scoring has doubled, Dylan. He was averaging 12.7 points per game last season. This season, he's up to 24 points per game. Goodness. He's also playing a lot more isolation ball. Last season, 1.8 average <laughs> per game in the iso ball. This season, five. Wow. So he's so saying clear out, clear more. out. Exactly. I'm going to take old dude off the dribble. And he's, it seems like what he's doing now, last year he came out, but that was mostly catching lobs mm -hmm. and all the flashy dunks. But now he's actually like, I'm not just a dunker. I'm a dude who actually can go get a bucket by myself. I don't need just LaMelo to throw me a lob. Or exactly. I'm in mean, transition. I can do it all by myself, too, and go get my own. Go get my own. And then we got to mention, when he's in those ISO situations, it's not necessarily him breaking dudes down with his handles. Yeah. It's him using his size and strength and right. being able to attack the rim. Maybe backing somebody down. Backing somebody bit. down. Put on that shoulder down. Get low. You know what I'm saying? Nice little drop step. Head down. Go to the okay. rim. Like they teach you fundamentals. Head down to the rim. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Crossing yeah. the bridges. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then, too, you got LaMelo Ball, who's mm -hmm. garnishing defensive attention. Mm -hmm. You got Gordon Hayward, who deserves some respect defensively. So having Gordon Hayward and LaMelo Ball is just opening up more opportunities for Miles, especially with his size. He gets mm -hmm. a lot of mismatches where he can take advantage of. Kelly Oubre, too, does help the space. And even though he's not necessarily somebody who's, you know, known for breaking anybody down off the dribble, he is a, he is a person who's a playmaker and a good shooter. So, you know, the person defending Kelly Oubre has to be a little closer to him and can't help out as much because, you know, Kelly's a, a viable shooter. So just the, the Hornets have done a good job providing a lot of space on that floor. They are really good with their space and just because of all the weapons they have. We see you, Hornets. Oh, we see, see you. Somebody else we see, Jordan Poole. Yes, Jordan Poole. Probably the one who is right now, if I had to give it to somebody right now, it'll probably be Jordan Poole. He has to be the front runner for most improved player of the year so far. Go ahead, give us why. Because Jordan Poole, I mean, so far without Klay Thompson, he's, I'm not gonna say he's completely filled the shoes of Klay Thompson, but he's darn near doing that. I mean, Jordan Poole has been balling out. Let's check out his stats. For, so compared to last year, Jordan Poole is up five more points per game, going from 12 to 17. He is almost, uh, he's, his free throw has gone from 88% to 96%. Huge jump there. Um, from last year, he was shooting, well, his three-pointers have gone down a little bit, but that's because he's shooting more volume. However, his field goal percentage has pretty much stayed the same. So basically what it is, is Jordan Poole is taking on a bigger role and he's showing up in a big way, knocking down shots. Um, I believe in like a three game span, like this past week, he scored 82 points in a three game span. So Jordan Poole has just been balling. Of course, Steph Curry is, I think the league leading scorer right now. With him getting all that attention, Jordan Poole has found himself getting a lot of open shots and he's, he's doing what he's gotta do, he's making them. Definitely, and lastly on the list, we got Georgie Nyang. Georgie Nyang, obviously playing for the Philadelphia 76ers, back up for Tobias Harris. George Nyang came from the Utah Jazz, and mind you, Dylan, I didn't know this last season, but the Sixers were interested in acquiring um, Nyang at the midseason um, trade deadline, but really? they couldn't get a deal done. Wow. So imagine if the Sixers had Nyang going into the playoffs versus Mike Scott. That would have been better. That I mean, yeah. I would still take the Hawks in seven, but it would have been better. I don't know about that. Either. But let's talk about his numbers. So he's averaging a career high in points, rebounds, and assists. He's averaging 12 points per game, 2.4 rebounds a game, 1.7 assists per game, and he's been a much more improved passer. He's got the floater going. He's got the jump shot going. Of course, the layup package is going. He's basically scoring on all three levels for the Sixers right now. He's backing up Tobias Harris, and he has been a huge, huge help off the bench. And he's just coming in with the Sixers being able to play his style of basketball. They're letting him just go out, be free, do him. Um, I think Nyang is definitely one of the runners for most improved player because he's an essential part of this winning Sixers. 
Now, when we're talking about who we think is the most important, I have to go with Miles Bridges on this list yes. because Miles Bridges is taking a team that nobody paid any inkling of attention to in the Hornets to now, oh, Hornets on, oh, I, I might stay up a little late. I might, you know, I might keep this game on. And, and if you think about it too, not only that, you know, now it's only drawing attention to a Hornets team that, you know, didn't have any buzz before, but they got some buzz now. Buzz City. He, it, think about this. If we took Jordan Poole out of Golden State, would that be a big hit to them? Yes, of course. We wouldn't be talking about him if it wasn't. But it wouldn't be as big as a big of a hit if we took Miles Mile mm -hmm. Bridges away from the Hornets. You said yeah. so. I mean, he's probably what the second leading scorer on that team, averaging 24 points per game. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of points they would be missing. And I mean, he's just an integral part. I mean, he's the spark of that team. Whenever he has a big dunk, whenever he does anything, it gets that Hornets team going and gives them a lot of momentum. So. He, he's a, he's not only the most important just because you know of the attention he brings and the the flashiness, but also his production too. The Hornets will miss him in a big way if they didn't have Miles Bridges. And now they got to pay him a big bag. You know how that goes. They're gonna have you to know drop how that, that bag on. They got to draw that bag on. You know what I'm saying? So guys, thank you so much for tuning in and sticking around and watching Tough Calls. These are our four breakout players, most improved players, whatever you want to call it. So we got. Niang with the Sixers. We got Miles Bridges with the Charlotte Hornets. We got Jordan Poole with the Warriors. And then we have Grayson Allen with the Milwaukee Bucks. Guys, I'm Simone with the Spielers. And I'm your boy Dylan. Yes, sir. And so we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye, Stack Coffee, and bye. bye.